Redemption Community Biker Church here at the, uh, what's the name of this place, Steve? Julio. <laughs> Julio's. <laughs> it's Julio's Iron Horse. <laughs> In Ormond Beach. Yeah. Julio. Ormond Beach. Ormond. Not Daytona. This is north of Daytona and south of Jacksonville. Way south of Jacksonville. Uh, I'm Big Jim Nolan, and uh, I'm here to play the guitar and sing a few songs. Frank, you Preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We'll have a little altar call. We got a continental breakfast, and we're all here to praise our Lord and Savior. Amen. That's what we're here for. Uh, on the second Sunday of every month, we're at Ross Myers. Third Sunday, we're here at the Iron Horse. The fourth, we're at uh, Boot Hill. But uh, next month in March, we're going to be up at Ross Myers on March 1st. That's the first Sunday. The second and third Sunday, we're going to be right here at the Iron Horse. Yep. And the fourth Sunday, we're going to be at the Boot Hill. Now, on the 14th of March, which is the last Saturday, we're uh, we're going to have a little special thing going on there. And two days before that, on Thursday, will be a tropical tattoo. And uh, the church has put together a, uh, an album of songs that, uh, that I wrote. And we, you know. Sunglasses are good. Uh, so I'm going to turn around and play a couple of songs off my motorcycle. And these are ones that have come out that will be on the album. And on the 14th, at the church, anybody that comes to church will get one of those CDs. And so, if, you so want, if you want to sign, somebody will sign it. I don't know. <laughs> somebody, somebody there will sign it. Probably me, if you can read my handwriting. But I want to go out there so we're going to warm this thing up and make a play. Might want to move, lads, otherwise you're going to pass out the carbon monoxide. Uh, you probably have, no, we're, I'm not going to crank it up. I'm just going to, you, you know, he'll probably pass out by the time. I didn't bring the hamp and stuff. This thing is, I could have run it through the, <laughs> the mic up there, but it's going to be. This is the cheapest Harley Davidson one they've got. Freedom's always on your mind in your sleep and work or play. I say, can you get Yeah, I get this thing to start at the beginning instead of where it wanted to. But that also has to warm up and be accepted so it was a little. I was just a young boy with those shoes on my feet And keep myself from thinking about school right down the street Where the kids would all stand up and pledge allegiance to the flag The bad heads and say, where to find the world Thinking that we're hitting for curse. The Lord has been expelled to save from these are public schools. 
Those songs were both uh, written in prison. Now, I'm not a songwriter. They were given to me from God. Mm -hmm. And that's why there'll be no charge for these things. There is no charge at all. You know, they're given to me. I've never taken any lessons for anything. So, uh, that's the way they're going out. <laughs> so we'll see what happens there. Well, thank you all. You know, just to speak quickly to the power of God in your life, Jimbo's really never supposed to get out of prison. No. <laughs> I mean, no I'm, no, I'm not being silly. I'm, I'm dead serious. Jimbo's 2036. 2036. And um, he's supposed to be in there through 2037. And, you know, he's here. He just recorded an album that he's using to the glory of God. He's on a, a nice little uh, motorcycle there. He's got a wife that's been with him the whole time. And, uh, you know, God is faithful. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Frankie. Welcome to the world famous Iron Horse Saloon here in Ormond Beach. And uh, I'm glad you've decided to join us this morning. Let's open it up in prayer. Father, we praise you for your love for us and how you instruct us. I pray this morning that you would teach us what you'd have us to learn and, and just pull me out of it and use your word to teach everyone here how you want us to go forward in our lives. We praise you and love you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, as I was putting together this lesson, you know, it, I, I really don't know if it's going to turn out well or not, so I'm going to warn you in advance. But as I was, I was putting it together, um, I figured I'd try it out this morning, and, and y'all can be guinea pigs, and uh, you can tell me at the end whether it's something I should move forward with at the church or not. And uh, sound like a plan? Yep. All right, cool. And the idea is, you know, a lot of times people look at Christians 
and they think there's something wrong with us. Yeah. You know, and and you know, I'm not saying that's not necessarily true, but the idea behind the series is why live the Christian life? Why live the Christian life? As we said last night in our service, the Christian life is hard. Um, Jesus said, "In this world, you will." have tribulation. He didn't say might, he didn't say maybe, he didn't say once you accept me, everything's going to be perfect. He said in this world, you will have tribulation. And the series is to point out kind of the things that people do outside the Christian life and, and why it's all a lie. You know, because in short, the enemy Satan is a liar. Mm -hmm. He is absolutely a liar. And he's got the world duped. And I'm going to read some scripture to you where, where we learn that Satan is a liar. And it says in John 8, 44, he was a murderer from the beginning. Mm -hmm. He has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character for he is a liar and the father of lies. You know, a lot of people don't know that, that that's in Scripture, where, where it actually points out Satan is a liar. The book of Revelation talks about the end of the world. I don't know if you've ever read it. A lot of people avoid that book. It's not a real happy book. Unless you're one of us, then it's a happy book. Uh, but in Revelation 12, 9, it says this, The great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world was thrown down to the earth with all his angels. He's a liar. <coughs> and I want to do this series because I really believe that most people don't even see it. They don't even see it. And to be honest, before I became a believer, I didn't see it. And perhaps you didn't see it. You know, he's got this world believing that God's now the enemy. And that he just wants to judge us and punish us. Isn't that incredible? He, he has us believing that the bad things are good and the good things are bad. I mean, there are people out there today saying, oh, we should accept everybody for what they are. You know, well, we are sinful people. I don't know if you know that or not. And there's some things that God just says are wrong. And you can hear the things in people's discussion today that you would have never heard just 20 years ago. People joke about going to hell. Have you heard it? Well, I'm going to be there with you, brother. <laughs> you know, they joke about it because they just don't believe it. They don't believe that there is a hell, frankly. And like I said, now if you look at our society, what's bad and what's bad is good. And this, the book of 2 Timothy talks about this. In chapter 3, it says this, You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times. For people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to the people. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. Folks, you can pull this out of our newspaper this morning. This was written years and years ago, right? They will betray their friends, be reckless with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that can make them godly. Stay away from people like that. Isn't that crazy? I mean, you read it and you're like, yeah, I see that. Isaiah, which was written even, you know, hundreds of years before the New Testament, says this in verse, or excuse me, in 5, verse 18. says, what sorrow for those who drag their sins behind them with ropes made of lies, who drag wickedness behind them like a cart. They even mock God and say, hurry up and do something. We want to see what you can do. Let the Holy One of Israel carry out His plan, for we want to know what it is. What sorrow for those who say that evil is good and good is evil. 
For that dark is light and light is dark and bitter is sweet and sweet is bitter. What sorrow for those who are wise in their own eyes and think themselves so clever. I love that. What sorrow for those who are heroes at drinking wine and boast about all the alcohol they can hold. This was written thousands of years ago. They take bribes to let the wicked go free and they punish the innocent. Folks, this is in the Bible. Satan has gotten the entire world fooled into thinking that the good things of this world are getting drunk or high. But that's the good stuff. The lusting after each other and having sex with anybody you want is true happiness. It's called hedonism. Anybody ever heard that word? Hedonism. It's when we chase only what makes us feel pleasurable. We lie every day like there's no big deal to it. We cheat on our taxes. We, we lie about insurance. We, we, you know, take stuff back to the store that was never broken just to get our money back. We commit acts of violence like they're nothing. And if you watch what's happening in our culture, you'll see it plain as day. But if you remember, before you became a believer, those were the good times, weren't they? <laughs> I mean, think about it. Those were the good times. But what about those of us who have already done those things? What do we have to say? It's interesting. They never want to talk to us. I remember getting so drunk I couldn't stand up. And I thought that was fun. I couldn't. I remember when I was 21, I drank so much that I couldn't even hold a beer bottle because I kept dropping it. Think about how vulnerable you are in that position. Mm -hmm. Women are raped, men are beaten and robbed. And that's a good time. <laughs> Woohoo! We're partying, right? <laughs> oh, but we're with our friends. They're gonna they're gonna take care of us, right? Yeah. They're worse than you are, bro. They're no better off. And one sober person can take this for all we're worth. I remember a friend of mine calling me at 6 a.m. We got totally obliterated the night before. He calls me. He's like, bro, you got to come pick me up. I'm like, where were you? He's like, I don't know. In an alley. I got bit by a rat. It's a true story. That was a good time. Right? And think about how you felt in the morning. That was fantastic, wasn't it? That was great. Those were good times. It's funny because it's true. We all have the same look. <laughs> if you don't believe me, go to Waffle House. 2 a.m., look around. Why don't we do that anymore? Because it's not real happiness, is it? We've mm -hmm. learned something. It's a lie. But having sex with anybody you want, that's that's gotta be fun, right? I mean, any time, any place, right? <coughs> How about those of us who have done that? I can guarantee that those of us who have done that regret those times. It changes how we look at the other sex. Yeah, it felt good for the minute, but there was nothing real about it. <coughs> All you feel about it later is shame and regret, right? I mean, there's nothing real about those relationships. Oh, we're partying, man. Look, music videos aren't real. White Snake is dead, y'all. Molly Crew's old. It's not what it seems. It's a lie. It's a lie. I don't know about you, but I remember when I wanted to be a tough guy. Right? A lot of guys in here identify with that. We want to be tough guys, right? We get tattoos and we uh, we ride around on fire machines, which we still love. Right? I want to be the baddest guy around. Right? I don't want people to fear me. Uh, you know what? I remember a time when I really, really hurt somebody. Got in a fight. I used to throw hands at the drop of a hat. And I had a tough burn, and I, and I got in a fight, and I knocked three teeth out of a guy. And I'm standing over him, I'll never forget it, and I'm like, yeah. And then he goes like this, and there's no teeth in the front. 
And when I saw that, I didn't feel tough anymore. I felt like a freaking idiot. I didn't feel strong. I didn't feel in control. In fact, I felt the opposite. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I felt like a loser is what I felt like. I couldn't get a date for months. Oh, you're that guy that did that. <laughs> Most people who have really harmed other people usually aren't very proud of it afterward. If you don't believe me, just watch some of the documentaries you can see on Netflix about people that have committed murder. They don't really want to talk about it. They don't really want to tell you how tough they are anymore. Or ask somebody who's been incarcerated for violent crimes. It's a lie. It's a lie. They don't really want to tell you how tough or bad they are anymore. The truth is our actions have consequences. And when we do those things that God warns us of, they change your perspective on life. For those people who tell me the world's way of living is where we find true happiness, I call bluff. I call bluff. On behalf of those who have been there, me included, and gotten that t-shirt, I say it's garbage. It's garbage. It's nothing but filling a void. It's filling a void. It's numbing our pain and numbing our loneliness enough to get through the day. The truth is, and everybody here knows it, when we're alone with our thoughts and we've done those things, we're ashamed. We're not proud, we're not happy, we're lonely, and we feel rejected. It's a lie, and he's got us to believe it. If you really want to know what it's like, just ask the people who have lived those types of lives their entire existence. You ever been to one of those funerals? In the end, there's nobody there. There's nobody there. No loved ones. No family. No friends. No real friends. Yeah, maybe there's one or two people that reminisce about how much he could drink or how he could take a punch. But that's not a real legacy. It's forgotten and discarded as quickly as an old newspaper, isn't it? That's the truth. You see, those of us who have lived that life now understand that God doesn't want to keep something from us when he tells us to stay away from it. He doesn't want to keep something from us. That's what we think. God's the big bad guy in the sky. He wants to keep us from having fun. He doesn't want to keep that stuff from us. He wants something for us. He wants us to find true relationships and true happiness and love with other people. But living that life, you reject everybody, don't you? I mean, really. We abandon people when we go to prison, don't we, Jim? John 10, 10 says the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. That's not what it says. If you go look in society, it's a blast. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give a rich Give them a rich and satisfying life. You see, sharing the gospel with other people isn't about being a religious freak. That's what people think. I don't want to be one of those people, little Bible beaters. It's not about being a religious freak. It's about rescuing those who believe Satan's lies out of that lifestyle and helping them to find real love and hope in Jesus. That's what we've all learned, right? Yep. Amen. Yep. We've been rescued. We don't look back and go, man, I wish I could go back to that. <laughs> because it's a lie. I once was blind, but now I see. Again, the gospel is about us helping other people to find what we found. The whole reason we're here this morning is because we've already learned that. That doesn't work. I tried it. It was not all it's cracked up to be. We no longer follow the lies. We've seen the truth. 
and we're much, much happier for it. John chapter 4 tells a story, I'm going to read it to you, about a woman who's living that life. And Jesus, Jesus, Jesus comes and talks to her. It's called the Samaritan woman, Jesus and the Samaritan woman. Starting in chapter 4, verse 3, it says, So he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He had to go through Samaria on the way. Eventually he came to the Samaritan village of Sychar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired from all the long walking, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. You can see this, right? He's walking through. He goes through this village. By the way, Jews weren't welcome in Samaria. They didn't like him. And the Samaritans didn't like Jews. And so Jesus is walking through, and he's tired, and he sits by the well, right? He goes up to the watering hole. And soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water. You see, they used to have to carry their water back in the house, you know. We, we complain when the fridge is too far from the couch, don't we? She came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone to the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? She's like, you're not even supposed to be talking to me. You're some holy roller. Don't you know who I am? You see, she came to the well at the middle of the day because she didn't want to be seen by anybody. Because she was living that life. She didn't want to run into anybody. And here's this Jew talking to her, and she's like, you're not even supposed to be talking to me. Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me, and I would give you living water. And she's thinking about regular water. She says, but sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob? gave us this well how can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoy Jesus replied anyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again but those who drink the water I give them will never be thirsty again it becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them giving them eternal life she said please sir give me this water I'll never be thirsty again and I won't have to come here to get water She's still thinking about regular water. And he says to her, go and get your husband, Jesus told her. This is where it gets good. <laughs> she said, I don't have a husband. The woman replied, Jesus said, you're right, you don't have a husband. For you've had five husbands. And you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. Yeah, this stuff's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. So tell me, why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place for worship? While we Samaritans claim here on Mount Jezum, where our Jerism, excuse me, where our ancestors worship. Jesus replied, believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter where you worship the Father on this mountain in, or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship. While we Jews know all about him, for salvation comes to the Jews. But the time is coming indeed. It is here now when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit. So those who worship him will worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming. The one who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. You see, this woman was living the high life, right? She was so happy about her lifestyle that she came to get water at the middle of the day so nobody could see her. She was ashamed. And when we're by ourselves and we think about the things we've done, we're ashamed. But the truth is, if we're believers in Christ, Jesus has set us free from that. We have no reason to be ashamed anymore. He set us free from that. 
But there are other people, folks, all around us that are still caught in those lies. They still believe them. Heck, there are still people that think the earth is flat. And Jesus gave us this message not to take away our good time, not to keep something from us, but to protect us. To help us to have real relationships and love and so that we might reach out to those around us and teach them the truth too. That's the whole reason for this. Yeah. I hope you've learned something from that this morning. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father God, we love you and we praise you for your word and how it instructs us. I pray as we go out that we would share the good news with those around us and that we ignore the lies that Satan throws at us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Have a great week, everybody. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Frankie. <clears throat>